Hey everybody, this is Locks with My Electric, and today I'm kickstarting my tutorial series here on YouTube. Many of you guys have asked what my play claw settings are, what my preferences are in play claw, so that's where we're going to start. I'm actually planning on doing several uh, different tutorial videos. One that I'm really looking forward to is Sony Vegas, but it kind of makes sense for this workflow to start with play claw. We'll get our capture, then we'll pull it into uh, Vegas, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so this is the play claw interface here. Um, you kind of navigate through these buttons here at the top. This is the very first uh, settings menu option. We're just going to ignore update licensing because that's got my info in there. But uh, here you got some basic startup options. A lot of these are very self-explanatory. I guess what I'm going to do rather than feature the application so much is just kind of show you what are key aspects for me, what I really like about it. Um, I don't really use the screenshots option a whole lot. So I'm going to kind of skip that. This is just my the path to my capture folder. This is something that makes a really big difference, the encoder type that you're using. A while ago, I used to compress to XVID format, which is really good. Small file size, uh, quality was still pretty decent. But uh, with the MJPEG codec, the, really the best thing about it is that it edits really well in Sony Vegas. Um, and really, that's where a lot of my frustration was coming with XVID. One thing that kind of drew me to uh, PlayClaw initially is that you could capture your FPS independent of what the rate was in game. Now I actually capture everything at 1080p and I set my FPS at actually 60, 60 in most instances. It really depends on the content that I'm capturing. You know, if I'm capturing just kind of a funny commentary, I might just leave it at 30. But a lot of times I like the option to go into slow-mo and most of my final renders out, out are actually running at 30 FPS. The benefit of, run, of capturing at 60 is if I want to go into a slow-mo, I don't have to worry about like post-production effects like using after effects to um, generate you know dummy frames basically I, if I get 60 frames I can slow it to half the speed and I'll still be getting 30 FPS on my final render basically what it means is that it gives you a lot more options in editing and I'm not hurting on hard drive space anymore so 60 FPS is good 1080p is good it compresses down good and edits well with MJPEG, so I'm happy. There are so many settings in PlayClaw that I haven't even messed with yet. One of the things here, video output to target, this is actually something I'd like to play with is for the virtual webcam. I think basically all this does is reroute your output rather than going to a file. You can actually share it with you know, a friend if you're on Skype or something like that. Just set up your Skype to use your PlayClaw virtual webcam and then they can see your game streaming over Skype. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the functionality. I haven't tested it, but I'm going to just go ahead and guess that's what it does. PlayClaw has always been feature rich and it PlayClaw will always kind of try out some new features. Um, I actually know the developer. That's one of the best things of why I like PlayClaw so much is that I can just contact him directly say, hey, you know, what do you think about this idea? And uh, I think you guys know me, you know, like I get excited about like Rock Hat, you know, their, their mice being innovative. Well, I kind of feel the same thing. I kind of feel the same way about PlayClaw and uh, the programmer that I talk to. I feel like he's very open to trying new ideas. And, uh, and I mean, really, there's, there's not a whole lot of capture programs that were doing what he was doing way back when and then just continue to, uh, to make what he's made available. So it's good to be able to listen to video directors, see what they want. As a director, I want to have unique videos, and I feel like PlayClaw kind of assists with that. I haven't seen a whole lot of videos that actually use avatars. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the Chinatown videos. Uh, I actually wasn't using PlayClaw back then. I manually edited in those avatars that were popping up down at the bottom. It was a huge pain in the ass, but you know, I talked to Ed, and, and he had something similar with names popping up, not actual graphics, and he implemented it into PlayClaw. So, like I said, he's open to ideas, and, and that's really the best thing, I think, about the application. Okay, so continuing on here. This setting here basically controls what audio streams are captured within PlayClaw. With a lot of captures, you'll mainly get one mixed down audio stream taking your game audio and your mic, or um, you know there might be a couple of different streams. Some might have an option where you can save them independently. Well, you know PlayClaw goes the extra freaking mile here and you can take in just tons of different audio sources and you can save them in, in independent WAV files. You can mix all your audio sources into one track 
or you can write all tracks in separate WAV files, and that's what I do. So this is my recording setup upstairs, so it's not really configured to what I'm using downstairs. Downstairs, I actually capture three different streams, and uh, I use another application called Virtual Audio Cable to kind of split stuff up further. Basically, I capture the game audio, I capture my own mic, and then I capture the, uh, the voice over IP audio from my friends, either on Skype or TeamSpeak or whatever it is. Um, and then that really gives me a lot of freedom in the editing of the video. I can adjust volumes there independently, and there are techniques you can do it uh, even when you do just have a single file, um, but this just really kind of simplifies things. So this is very nice to have, and it's pretty much something I've only seen in PlayClaw. Let's just look under uh, advanced settings here. Uh, this is just some organization stuff. Yes, I do use... Uh, to the captures for subfolders and then uh, timestamps underneath those. Um, that just makes things easier for organization. Not much more to see there. Um, now this part's actually a little bit wonky for me right now because I'm running dual monitors. That's so you don't get my start bar and everything down here. Um, but I think that this screen, uh, the resolution is thrown off because I am using dual monitors. So I kind of had to adjust stuff differently here. But normally, if you're running a single monitor, I think that this would display right. Uh, for this purpose, I'm running 1280 by 720. Um, and what you can do is basically load in screenshots so you can kind of see what things are going to look like in game these are all your different overlay options and it just kind of gives you a rough idea of, of what's going where you get tons of options you can adjust transparency uh, you can adjust what actually shows up in recordings and in screenshots um, so it's it's really customizable you can change colors you can change fonts I mean there's a lot of things that you can do to make your video unique or just kind of uh, cool independent from the norms and such set yourself apart what have you um, now I went through and created some uh, voice avatars here <clears throat> this graphic shows that weird background like that because it's actually a uh, an alpha layer back there they don't really look like that you'll see what they look like when they're actually in game but uh, I went ahead and preloaded some of these and I think the max resolution you can do is 256 so I have them at 256 and then they're scaled down to 150 pixels uh, there is a webcam overlay that's another one of those features that I haven't tried yet but it's really freaking awesome um, anyway these are the avatars and basically they will light up in game when you're talking. I went ahead and pulled up Call of Duty earlier and I got my TeamSpeak server down here somewhere just to give you an idea what this looks like. Assuming shit didn't crash and I may have assumed wrong. Okay. Hi. That's basically it right there. Every time I talk that little dude pops up. Now I'm actually in TeamSpeak and what it goes by is your name in there and this just uses a plugin that interacts with uh, TeamSpeak. By the way, this is our TeamSpeak. If you haven't come hang out here, you should come hang out here. Anyone who's talking, you can have it so all these avatars are up on the screen and, and one of them's like kind of, or all of them are basically uh, of an opacity of whatever you configure. And then when you talk it, it will actually be full of 100% opacity and zero transparency. But um, I opted for just the basically clean HUD, just one avatar, whoever is talking will pop up here. So yeah, that's cool. That's definitely a uh, neato burrito. For each game that you play, you can have pre-configured profiles um, that control items on your HUD. So you could have everything preset so you're not having to change it depending on what game you're playing, uh, which is really nice. That's what the profiles function is for. And I'm gonna show you what that is here. So the profiles you can link, so I could have numerous Call of Duty profiles. I could have one that's just like if I'm playing solo, if I'm playing with a group, and I can control all the different overlays um, so they work with that profile. Uh, right now I just have it assigned to default. Like I said, this isn't my normal capturing setup up here. And you can blacklist certain EXEs, so Blakeclaw pretty much ignores them. So yeah, there's, there's lots of flexibility there. There's lots of customization. You know, like I said, my, my favorite aspects of Playclaw 
is uh, just having something to kind of set my videos apart from other people's a bit of uniqueness um, the flexibility of independent um, FPS capture and that can really make a difference like I remember back in any Quake 3 based game if you're running at 76 125 FPS or 333 FPS uh, you would gain the benefit of like further movement, higher jumps, faster movement, I think. And uh, if you know you were using Fraps or another capture program back then, you'd pr pretty much be SOL. So that's a big thing. And the MJPEG thing is just huge for me right now. I mean, editing is is a freaking breeze. And before it was a total nightmare. You know, you'd hit the play button in Vegas and you'd just be sitting there scratching your head waiting for that thing. Or you'd have to <clears throat> render re-encode jobs at the end of the night to take all your, uh, take all your recordings and com compress them into a friendly format. So, uh, so those are, those are the big selling points for me with PlayClob. So yeah, I think that's probably going to wrap up for this video, guys. Um, like I said, I'm going to be covering Sony Vegas here very soon. And those, those videos, I think I'm, I'm going to keep very short, very sweet and very specific to, to certain topics. Like I'll probably start with, uh, just, you know, project settings and then move into uh, basic editing techniques and then, and then just kind of go from there. That will just, I think, increase searchability on YouTube. People can find the, the really specific topics that they're looking for. Um, but, uh, this is a good way I think to kind of kick things off. A lot of people have asked about how you know, how I use play claw and what my settings are. So now I think you kind of have a general idea and you may have an idea of what features play claw has and the direction that it's going. So, um, if you're interested in play claw, check the link, you can actually get a discount on it through my electric. Um, and, uh, stay tuned for future play claw releases as I know the programmer is going to be implementing some really cool stuff. So thanks for watching everybody. Peace out.